Is this thing on? I haven't used it in so long. What's up guys? Welcome back to my channel. My name is David Hanlon, AKA The Laptop Legend, and it's been a really long time since I made a video. Well, it feels like a long time. I think it's been like, what, a week? Sorry guys, I have been in the middle of trying to get packed for moving. I moved to Florida uh, in the next couple of days, so it's gonna be crazy. Gonna have a new setup. Might not be as pretty as this uh, until I can get it figured out, but you know, I guess we'll uh, we'll see how it goes. So that is what's what's been going on with me, but I've still been trading. If you're in the Discord, I've still been live on the mic every single day, so you haven't been missing that. And uh, guys, it's a really exciting market. AMC is squeezing really hard, and uh, I know some dude who, who was down like 800,000, no, 700,000 on a short, but then made made it back by flipping to the long side and going like eight, made 800,000 positive so we ended up like 60 grand positive on the day. It's crazy man. There's a lot of uh, opportunity to profit on that. We had some people in Discord really killing it on that stock so congrats to everyone who is long on that stock. And uh, me, I've been sticking to my OTCs guys. I've still been trading like normal. Still have not had a red day yet this month. I'm trying to close out tomorrow green for my first completely green month. So we'll see how that goes. But I'm just going to give you guys you know, a little bit of, uh, of, of a recap of what's been going on and you know talk about what stocks I'm going to be watching for tomorrow. So that's it for this intro. Let's dive into my computer as you know how we do. All right, guys, so I'm here at my laptop, and this is the chart today for AMC. I'm sure most of you guys were probably watching this a good portion of the day, but I mean, it, it, it's, it, it's, it's squeezing pretty hard. And if you don't know technical analysis at all, I just got to show you guys, uh, this is the reason why it's squeezing. So it broke past those highs there from uh, that previous run right here. Um, and you can see, obviously, I mean, it went up huge and then just came back down. And uh, when it broke through that area today, a lot of short sellers got really squeezed. And I mean, it barely, it barely even stop there. I mean, I think it was right around this area. So, I mean, you can see it it, uh, it chopped around for a little bit, but then just ripped right on through and never broke back down below that area. So, uh, I think, you know, this, this could have been a decent area that you could have longed it from when it was refusing to break down here at all in this area. It's a pretty good sign that short sellers are not going to have an opportunity to cover. So, you know, if you short, uh, into this resistance, you know, maybe maybe short the breakout past that. You're, you're hoping that it's going to break down. You know, it fails here. You're thinking, all right, it's going to dump. I'm going to have a chance to get out for a profit. And I think a lot of people were thinking that. That's probably why that dude lost, you know, 700,000 shorting it. But when it continues on up, they literally never have an opportunity to get out. It, it just, it never breaks down. So if you're shorting the high day break, uh, and the, I guess the, 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 the 52 week high break, I don't know if it's all time highs. Maybe all time highs. I'm not sure. I'm not sure how far back this goes, but uh, when you're shorting that, you're kind of hoping that it's going to break down and uh, kind of reject that breakout. So when it didn't do that, guys, it, it turned into an epic squeeze and uh, really went ex exponential. And that's typically how these charts look, guys. You know, they, uh, they they look like this, and then it's kind of an accelerating support curve as it squeezes harder and harder, and shorts, you know, are forced to cover, and uh, you know, more people buy, and there's more, I guess, more long momentum, and eventually it gets to the point where it just it goes straight up, and that's typically the point where it's it's the high, and it comes crashing back down, and then it will bounce, but it won't make it past that high. You know, it'll make a lower high, and then it'll keep fading on off. So this is very typical. But one thing that we do need to look at is the fact that it held this area at 25 right here. And that is a very, very important area. Now, I guess it was 25, 12, but I would say that the, the key psychological support here is 25. And again, that's because everything that is a, a whole number is something that is your, your brain is more attracted to and that's more likely to serve as that psychological support and resistance. So we see that 25 level right here, it double bottomed. So it bounced once, and then bounced again and failed to break down twice. So as long as it holds over this area, I think it has a pretty damn good chance of squeezing past these highs tomorrow. And uh, it may honestly do that in pre-market, guys. I mean, we, we may wake up to see AMC at, at 30, 35, 40, for all I know. Uh, so I, I think this is definitely one you want to keep your eye on. Personally, I'm not going to be trading it because I really don't like NASDAQs in general. Uh, and I, I, uh, I can't take the type of size because I'm not patient enough uh, to just let it run. So that, that's uh, kind of an issue that I, I guess I should probably try to work on. But I'm, I feel like I'm, uh, I'm destined for OTC land, guys. So I'm personally not going to be trading these. But we had a lot of guys banking in Discord on this. So again, congrats to everyone who was banking on AMC. Uh, just so you can see, guys, um, it was kind of paving the way for these other meme stocks to uh, to keep moving on up. GME had some nice movements today. EXPR, I think, spiked pretty hard in after hours. 
uh, but came back down. But you know, it's 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 up a good amount, guys. I mean, it's nearly doubled in the last few days. So uh, just keep an eye on these because we know how hard they can squeeze. And uh, GME is just just a, a great example of that. You know, I mean, it really can go full supernova. And uh, I guess you know if it gets over this level at 350 here, watch out on GME. But uh, AMC, it's it's right at those highs, guys. So that's that's something you guys need to keep an eye on if you trade listed stocks at all. Because I mean, what else are you gonna be watching? AMC, baby. Uh, but in terms of, I guess, a few other listed stocks that are running, uh, we had CHMA that had a press release, I believe, in After Hours. CHMA, you can see that spiked up a ton, and I guess it faded off. I think they may have posted about this in Atlas, uh, so that may be, may be why it spiked up so much. But we'll see what this one does tomorrow. Just want to keep on you on your watch list. Uh, GNUS. Uh, it's just been kind of grinding up, so that's one you want to keep an eye on. Um, again, guys, I don't, I don't really trade listed stocks, so I guess I'll probably just move on to some of the uh, the OTCs I've been trading recently. So I guess the play of the day today that I totally butchered was NWGC. And basically, I mean, this is an epic panic, guys. This is an epic panic. And what sucks is I screwed it up in pretty much every single way I possibly could have. And I, I've done this... Uh, pretty much with every good opportunity in the last week, which is which is what's frustrating for me. But you know, if I'm still green, I guess I guess you know, it's it's not the end of the world. So we'll see we'll see how I continue to react to these. But I'm trying to learn from my mistakes. But it's tough when plays play out very differently. So when you see a play in the middle of the day that starts tanking like this, you assume it's going to bounce from like right here and see a nice bounce. But when it tanks this much it's because there's some type of really bad news, or at least people think there's really bad news. And apparently what happened here was there's some type of hearing that's that was supposed to happen. I don't know for what, I, I really don't know. I'm not super into this. Um, but apparently the, the hearing was pushed off and uh, people thought it was, it was a bad thing, but it was supposedly not that bad of a thing. So it was kind of an overreaction and a huge panic sell off. So, uh, I mean, I didn't realize I could short this until I'm not sure where. It might've been like, right there or something like that. And at that point, I felt like the shorting opportunity was already over. I didn't want to chase. I mean, I don't like shorting after this many red candles because it can see a huge bounce like this. So uh, I didn't really get to short this too, too much. Uh, and it just, it kind of stinked. And then what's even more frustrating is that I was longing this. I, I longed this from under eight, man. I longed this, I'm not sure exactly from where. I think it might've been, might've been from right here. Uh, but I did dip by here and then sold right at the bottom at 0072. Um, so I, I, I got kind of chopped out here. But because of a particular chart that I, I don't think I get, got to talk about, or maybe I did, I think that might have been my last video when stocks don't bounce. Uh, but INCC is another stock that had a very similar chart where it runs up for a couple of days and uh, then it just absolutely dumps out of nowhere, except that stock did not bounce at all. It literally did not bounce at all. And I was worried that was going to happen here. So even though I bought here, uh, I didn't want to buy big size and I ended up selling it very, very quickly. And uh, I got chopped out here. So you can see this little red candle. Like I bought here, maybe like seven, nine, and I sold one at like eight, five, one fifty thousand share batch. I had 150,000 shares total. And I sold the rest at like eight, two and eight, one bro on this red candle. And then it went on to run. It, it bounced like I think it was like, it was nearly 100% bounce. I mean, it was like 90 plus percent bounce in like, what, an hour? Not even an hour? 10.35, I mean, that's like 30 minutes, 100% bounce. So these are some epic plays, guys. I butchered this so poorly. But again, you know, if, if you go look at the chart for INCC, uh, you'll see why I was a little bit skeptical, guys. I mean, so this chart did a very similar thing, except it really didn't bounce at all. You know, it didn't bounce at all. So I had this in the back of my mind looking at that chart. And for that reason, like I just, I thought this was gonna, this first bounce when that red candle came, I thought it was just gonna tank and keep going. So I just, I got out. Cause it was already a slow day and I was already giving back profits. So that uh, that was very frustrating for me to uh, to butcher that. But you know, it is what it is. Um, you can't You can't win them all guys. And it's better to be overly cautious and uh, not make more gains than be overly aggressive and take some big losses. So that, that's, that's always my go-to and uh, you know, it is what it is. Uh, TAWNF, man, this, this thing was back in play today. This was my, my savior today because it had 13 green candles in a row. I'm not gonna count them all for you, but uh, it, was, it was really nice and I had some decent size in some of these parts. I kept buying and then selling and then rebuying and reselling. I rebought here and then I sold most of it. I got out here, but then I ended up getting dumped with uh, my last 10K shares, but not too horribly. Um, but you know, I had some nice dip buys, but I didn't get the fill down there. But I mean, th th there's a lot of money to be made here. You know, you take you take 20,000 shares at 18, you sell it at, at 21. 
that's three cents a share. That's still 600 bucks profit. So it's it's uh, it's it's a lot of opportunity to profit here. I'm gonna be watching this one tomorrow, guys, because it, it still did uh did close pretty nice. You know, you can draw you can draw these lines. Obviously, get that kind of uh, ascending triangle, ascending wedge wedge pattern. My goodness, come on, man. There we go. So you can see here, you know, it's kind of coming towards a breakout. So have to see if this thing can uh, can rip up through these levels. But I'm definitely watching this hard tomorrow. Hopefully it uh, it gives us some juicy action, and that's going to be my main focus, I'd say. BRLL, this is one that I want to throw on your radar. They filed a, uh, an SEC Form 8K, and uh, it actually came out here, but then they alerted it in one of the breaking news chats. So because of that, it started getting some more volume towards the end of the day. I got squeezed on this short a little bit because Citadel was uh, manipulating. But this is one that I'm actually watching tomorrow for a potential short um, or potential long I guess um, but more honestly more a potential short this was a I, I mean this is just another one of those ones that, that, that went supernova I guess back when uh, back in February man so many stocks that's crazy I didn't even realize that I mean literally so many stocks guys I mean if, if, if you go uh, um, uh, I mean, there's just there's so many stocks that all did the exact same thing. So pretty crazy, pretty crazy. But uh, I'm watching that one for a potential short tomorrow. The other one I'm watching for potential short is HMBL, guys, and uh, it's in the middle of kind of a short squeeze right now. They put out Hindenburg Research put out a, a hit piece kind of down here, and uh, it ended up tanking. But it's had five green days in a row, so that's pretty epic. And hopefully, you know, I mean, it closed right in your high days. So this may gap up and continue to spike, but if it goes exponential. I don't know where it would get up to, but it uh, should be a really nice short, and uh, I'm going to be looking for that. And if I miss the short entry, I'll just be looking for dip buys. But uh, the higher it gets, you know, five green days in a row, it's going to be a better short, obviously, than a, uh, than a dip buy, because even if it dips from 137 down to 12, it's still kind of overextended. So we'll see what happens, but uh, I'm, I'm excited for that one. And then the last one that I'm watching, I would say, last main one that I'm watching is, uh, is did I type that name wrong? GGII, guys. And this is one that uh, it really, really went insane. We had a lot of people do really well on this. I underestimated how high it could go. Um, obviously, this run was incredible, but uh, now it's all the way back down under three cents. So this is, again, just an example of why you need to lock in profits, especially when things go ridiculously high. Uh, anyone who says, you know, a stock that runs from, I don't even know, bro, what, 003 to, to 16 cents in a very short amount of time. In this market is not gonna pull back, they're lying to you. So uh, if you're crazy about this stock, I guess you can you can go long on it here. Uh, but I, I, honestly, I, I'm not sure what it's gonna do, guys. I'm not sure what it's gonna do. Um, I guess the biggest thing that I would be looking for overall is maybe like some type of swing, because if you look here, uh, it did seem to bottom out really nice in this 2.8 area. So given how much it's down, like there's a lot of room to the upside. Uh, so I wouldn't be surprised to see this thing start spiking tomorrow. Um, I almost overnighted it, but I decided not to. But you know, potential entry in the low low threes or maybe two eights if this if this still holds, uh, this thing could easily, I think, get back over four, over five, maybe over six, over seven into this area. Maybe maybe in this you know run of this this resistance uh, right here, former support turns into resistance. So maybe in that in that seven area, uh, it could be a good a good target for this one. So. Uh, Look for that, guys. Just a just a potential idea. And uh, what else? I guess ILUS. I had to show you guys this one. So this one was just unfortunate. Uh, I kept trying to swing this, but it ended up breaking down under that key support level right there. You can see uh, extend to the right. So you can see that that key six cent support area. It broke down through that. And if you're wondering why that is, it's because uh, they had some previous toxic debt holders, and uh, they they had 80 million shares. And supposedly the CEO was able to cap it off at that, but they still had 80 million shares to dump on the open market. And uh, based on, you know, the, the volume, uh, I can't, where do I see the volume here? Yeah, so 36 million, 29 million. So I guess it could be close to over, honestly. Could be close to over at this point uh, based on how much selling there's been. So that could have been max panic today uh, down here in this area. I actually missed the dip buy, unfortunately, but I did get a nice short right here at 5.4. Uh, so that was cool. But I think this could potentially be the bottom. But once the dilution is over, guys, this should be a pretty good long-term swing, long-term investment, whatever you want to call it. Uh, I know it's come from very cheap and gone up you know, pretty high, and it did crack the support level. But once that dilution is over, again, they, they got a lot of cool things coming. CEO seems pretty cool. So this is one that I would like to swing once the dilution is over and it can start working its way on back up because they got a lot of big things coming from what I've heard. So that's pretty much it, guys. Uh, I'm still holding a ton of MIDI. A ton of MIDI. Um, 
it's just kind of bouncing around this area, still consolidating. Uh, they're still doing everything they talked about. They announced their new clinic. So, I mean, at this point, it's, I think it's just, you know, market makers uh, walking it down. And that's very normal in OTC market. I'm really not concerned. Again, I don't plan on selling my shares anytime soon. Uh, I'm holding at least 200K for, you know, the next year or so, if not a lot longer. So, uh, yeah, uh, I'm just excited about this company. They're doing some really, really cool things. They're hiring a lot more people. They're expanding, opening more locations. I think they got three new locations coming in the next few months. So still uh, making good on all their promises and uh, just exciting stuff, guys. So I'll see you in the next one. Until then, you know the drill. Let's grow better together. Preguntar, bebé, dime por qué te mientes. No puedes esconder todo lo que tú por mí sientes.